Today, I really want to address a very important question. How do you find a good Chinese medicine doctor? In the United States, there are several types of people or professionals who are practicing acupuncture. Most of them are coming from a acupuncture and Chinese medicine school or oriental medical school in the United States. They offer master degree of acupuncture, sometimes Chinese herbal medicine. Some of the programs offer additional disciplines like Qigong, like Tui La, and other uh, Japanese or Korean style of acupuncture courses. Overall, they are the one who practice acupuncture in the United States in the most of the clinics. The good things about them is that they're trained in the United States. Most of them are from the same culture and speaking the uh, same language, can communicate very well with the audience or with their clients. The challenge with them is that even though they had a clinical experience during their time in study, but they don't have a residence training. So they don't have a postgraduate training before they enter the practice. So they require a lot more continued education. That is the weakness of this type of program. Some of the school now began to offer doctor degree program. With the doctor degree program, they have a advanced training and learning in some specialties. And also they began to learn how to do research or write papers. I'm not sure how much it helped them to become a better acupuncturist uh, without more clinical practice. So second types of acupuncturist practice in the United States are the traditional Chinese medicine doctor from China. They graduate from traditional Chinese medical university or college and from China. They're qualified to sit for examinations to be licensed. Normally they will pass those exams and uh, provided their English is good enough so they are able to be licensed uh, to practice in the United States. For those doctors, particularly those who already practiced medicine in China, had a more clinical experience. And they studied the traditional Chinese medicine in a more systematic, comprehensive fashion. And the shortcoming of those graduates, based on my experience in China, is of course they're not very adapted to the culture here or language here, and particularly the healthcare system. Um, so they have to really learn a lot about that. And the second problem is they're not very tuned into psychological, emotional issues. And in China, that wasn't emphasized in the education at all, at least when I was trained there. I only had a certain hours of psychiatry. And also, they don't pay very much attention to how spiritual health affects people's health. So they tend to be more hardcore doctor. They're trying to treat the disease or illness or suffering or pain. Um, but they're not necessarily very sensitive to psychological aspects of the patients. So when I was in the medical school in China, our curriculum only has about 13 hours of clinical psychiatry, which was far from enough. So I ended up going to WHO training center for clinical psychiatry for a year and going to Oxford for a clinical psychopharmacology fellowship and repeating the entire psychiatry residency at Thomas Jefferson in the United States. That's how important I think that mental health is critical for our overall well-being. The third type of doctors are actually medical licensed medical doctor in this country. And they're interested in learning about Chinese medicine. Some of them want to practice it. So they really take a lot of time and efforts and to learn about it. I give you two examples. One is a doctor who take the 300 continued medical education courses. That's all you need as a licensed medical doctor in the United States to be certified, to be licensed, to practice acupuncture. Most of people who went through these kind of courses uh, don't feel comfortable enough to practice. 
One of the students I taught in the fellowship program of Arizona Integrative Medicine Center went to three of these kind of programs, still feeling very confused. Another doctor who actually decided, in addition to this 300 CME hours, he enrolled himself into a four-year master degree program of traditional Chinese medicine. And so he traveled between Philadelphia and New York for over four years and on over the weekend to study it. That's really someone who wants to learn and the medicine. Anyway, um, all these doctors, they have strengths. They have oh, definitely uh, the physician acupuncturists are very well versed with modern medicine. Some of them can bridge the difference between two medicines. And of course, the weakness is for the doctors who practice Western medicine and Chinese medicine, sometimes they can get two medicine confused because they didn't realize these two medicine addressing the human health issues from different dimensions. In the Western medicine, it's more from the structural biochemical dimensions and Chinese medicine is more about energetic dimensions. So the concept of both medicines sometimes superficially similar, but in essence, they are different. One describes the structure like the liver, the one describes a energy like the liver actually means the liver energetic network or liver meridians. So regardless of what background the, this doctor coming from, is there any sign you should be looking for to see whether this doctor is a good doctor or practicing good Chinese medicine? Well, again, everybody has their own criteria and judgment. Here's what I would look for. First of all, as I mentioned, whether the doctor really pay attention and listen to me and really cares. Okay, that's the first. The second the things I want to see, if he asks me a lot of questions, not only the question a general medical doctor would ask, but also questions most of the general medical doctor would never ask. For example, they were asking me about whether I'm sensitive to cold or heat, whether I feel tired easily, feel heavy in my joints, in my body, and they're asking me a lots of questions as if they're doing systematic review. But actually, what they're really doing is trying to formulate an energetic diagnosis. In addition to asking all those questions, they have to do two more things. One is they have to read your tongue. Because tongue reading is a critical part of assessment of someone's energetic status. And for example, whether your tongue is puffy, swollen, if your tongue have a coating or doesn't have a coating, and whether the coating is thick or thin, or greasy, or yellow, or black, and whether there's tooth mark around the edge of the tongue, whether there's blood vessel congestion underneath your tongue, whether your tongue can be still or keep tremoring. All those signs are very important for the doctor to evaluate your energetic status. And the second part is critical too, whether or not they can read your pulses. In Chinese medicine, pulses is not just used for measuring your heartbeat, you know, uh, your heart rates, or how fast it is, how slow it is, how strong it is, how weak it is. Actually, there are six pulses on each side, and each pulse is corresponding with an energetic status of your internal organs. And they have 28 different patterns that you can describe of the pulses in order to tell what's going on with each internal organs. It is a science, it is art, but it is very real. And in the future, I will demonstrate to you how real it is. Because each internal organs also connect with different parts of the brain, therefore responsible for different emotional uh, experience as well as a mental experience. The pause reading can tell which emotional status you are in right now. And if you run into a doctor who just asks you a question 
I'd say what's your problems. And without doing all that, without asking all those questions, without knowing your entire health status, your constitutional types, and start giving you acupuncture treatment, I will be very careful because you don't know what he is treating. Acupuncture is a treatment modality of an entire Chinese medical system in order to produce safe, effective treatments, you have to first and foremost make a good diagnosis. And making good diagnosis, you have to know where to look for, what to look for, and make sure you can get all the information you need in order to make the diagnosis.